So good day to everyone. So we will be discussing for today is the distribution of active volcanoes, earthquake epicenters, and major mountain belts for Science 10 first lesson. So I'm Sir Hill Rochelle. I'll be the one to discuss this lesson to you. So for the key question for this particular topic, um, how are active volcanoes, earthquake epicenters, and major mountain belts distributed globally? So, sa topic na to, we will uh, be discussing kung paano nga ba nakadistribute, kung saan natin makikita yung mga active volcanoes, yung mga earthquake epicenters for the past um, years, and yung mga major mountain belts sa ating mundo. So, paano nga ba sila distributed? Paano nga ba sila dinistribute? Pa paano sila in arrange or paano sila nag occur what is the arrangement of their occurrence so for the preliminary activity so i want you to get a piece or a sheet of any paper and three colored pens or crayons of three different colors so just pause this video and then we will continue with what we're going to do with that sheet of paper. So I'll ask you to pause this video, get three or get three different colors or three different colored pens or crayons and a piece of paper. Okay, so I believe you have there the sheet of paper and the three different colors of colored pens or crayons. So in that particular paper sheet, I want you to draw a horseshoe-shaped diagram or just simply draw an inverted big letter U. So parang pabaligtad na U malaki. Mag-join lang kayo dyan sa piece of paper nyo. So after um, illustrating an inverted big, big letter U, in your paper, I want you to draw small dots on that particular uh, inverted U diagram using these three different colors of colored pens or crayons. So, magtuldok-tuldok lang kayo doon sa loob at sa labas or in the vicinity of the U, the inverted U that you have there in your paper. Basta tuldok-tuldokan nyo lang. Then, after doing that, um, set aside that particular activity because we're going to use that as we go along with our discussion for today. Let's try to um, compare that activity or that output of yours to our lesson for today. So, in order for us to understand the idea of um, the distribution of active volcanoes, earthquake epicenters, and mountain belts, we need to understand first the structure of the Earth because the structure of the Earth has something to do with how um, active volcanoes, earthquake epicenters, and mountain belts uh, formed or occur in our Earth. So as we all know, um, structure of the Earth comprises of four different layers. The first one is the solid inner core, or the center part of the Earth, followed by the liquid outer core, the yellow one in the PowerPoint presentation. And the third one is the mantle. This one is a semi-liquid rocks or molten rocks capable of moving gradually. And the last one and the outermost part of the Earth, kung nasaan tayo ngayon, is what we call the crust. And particularly, we will be focusing our attention with the crust because most of the time or um, all of the processes involving the production or the occurrence of active volcanoes, earthquake epicenters, and mountain belts happen in the crust or on the crust of the earth. So the earth's surface or the crust itself is, is divided into tectonic plates. So, yung pinakalabas or balat ng ating mundo ay um, binubuo ng mga different tectonic plates na tinatawag natin. These are the land masses or slabs of rocks um, na uh, kung saan tayo nakatungto, kung saan yung mga halaman tumutubo, at kung ano-ano pa mga animals. So, the crust is not one continuous layer, but it is made up of seven large tectonic plates and many smaller ones or slabs of rock floating on the mantle. So actually, the Earth is not really a big landmass. That's why marami tayong mga pulupulo at marami tayong mga different countries because the Earth itself composed of different tectonic plates. So ibig sabihin, it is not, it is not 
composed or it is not really a one big land mass. For today, we have different tectonic plates. So, kung mapapansin niyo sa ating illustration, we have different tectonic plates, namely, the North American plate, the Eurasian plate, the Pacific plate, Australian plate, Eurasian plate, um, African plate, South America plate, Nazca plate, and Antarctic plate. So, napakaraming um, tectonic plates that we have. And it, this is categorized into two, the major tectonic plates and the minor tectonic plates sa pinatawag natin. So, all in all, meron tayong 15 tectonic plates. We have 8 or I believe we have 7 minor te uh, major tectonic plates and we have 8 uh, minor tectonic plates. So, the North American plate, the um, Eurasian plate, the Nazca plate, and so on and so forth. So, yung kompletong tectonic plates na meron tayo, nandito sa ating PowerPoint ngayon. Yan. Lahat ng mga yan, ang siyang bumubuo ng pinaka-earth natin. The crust of the earth comprises these uh, different tectonic plates that we have. So, if you're going to categorize these tectonic plates, we are coming up or we will be coming up with the continental plates and the oceanic plates. So, itong mga tectonic plates na ito, itong mga crust na ito, ay kinakategorize natin into two types. So, we have the continental plates and the oceanic plates. So, paano ba natin madidistinguish between the continental plates and oceanic plates na ba sila? So, pag sinabi natin continental plates or the crust, um, these are the plates which is lighter or less dense, thicker about 30 kilometer or more, and mostly above sea level. So, yung mga um, tinatapakan natin, mga animals, tayo mga tao, those are what we call the continental plates. Yun yung mga tinatawag nating kontinente. So, di ba meron tayong North America continent, the Asia continent, the, the Australia continent, um, the uh, South America continent. So, those are what we call the continental plates na tinatawag. So, these are the plates which is lighter, medyo mas mababa or mas mas magaan, thicker about 30 km or more, and mostly above sea level, or yung mga nakalutang or makikita natin above sea level. Those are what we call continental plates. They are thicker compared to the other one, which is the oceanic plates, because uh, the continental plates are ranging from about 30 km or more. So, medyo mas makapal siya. Kasi nga, mas, mas less than siya. So, mas malaki siya. So, therefore, mas makapal siya. So, for oceanic plates naman, or crust, which is heavier, more dense, thicker about 5 kilometers, and mostly below sea level. These oceanic plates or crust um, are those crust na nakasubmerged totally or fully submerged in water. Ito naman yung mga nasa ilalim ng tubig, yung mga na... Um, kinocomprise ng abyssal plain, ng mga sea bed rocks. So, yan yung mga tinatawag nating oceanic plate. Compared to the continental plate, this one is thinner, which is about 5 kilometers, and mostly below sea level. So, yung mga nasa ilalim na ng tubig at ng mga karagatan. So, the movement of the plates has greatest impacts, where two tectonic plates meet, known as the plate boundary or margin. The center of the plates away from the margins tend to be stable and distant from major tectonic plates. So, kung titignan natin, sum up natin, ng tectonic plates, let's go back lang doon sa ating map, this one. So, all of the land masses, which are far from the plate boundaries, those are the red lines that you can see in, in the presentation in the slide. Lahat ng mga islands or lahat ng mga land masses, according to the definition a while ago, lahat daw ng mga land masses or yung mga kalupaan na malayo doon sa tectonic, sa plate boundaries, those are the red graphs in our slides, ay hindi daw sila prone sa mga different natural phenomena like volcanic eruption, like um, earthquake, and so on and so forth, simply because all of the natural phenomena, like those what I have said, um, occur in the plate boundaries. Since, kagaya ng sinabi ko, um, these plate boundaries or these tectonic plates um, are moving independently. 
So lahat sila gumagalaw ng kanya-kanya. If they are moving independently, there is a tendency that they will collide somehow. Pwede silang nagko-collide, pwede rin naman silang lumalayo sa isa't isa. So kapag ganun ang nangyayari, it can occur a lot of natural phenomena, a lot of natural occurrences. Pwede sila makabuo ng mga tinatawag nating volcanoes, pwede sila makabuo ng mga tinatawag nating earthquake. Depende sa klase ng galaw, ng dalawang um, tectonic plates na involved. So, simply, all those um, land masses, countries, lies above the plate boundaries are most likely to experience different natural phenomena na tinatawag natin. So, um, approximately 1,550 sub-aerial volcanoes in the world today are thought to have erupted in the last 10,000 years and thousands more volcanoes ring the seafloor. So, technically, pag sinabi na kasi natin ang isang vulkan ay nag-erupt ng less than 10,000 years or nagkaroon siya ng volcanic activity for the past 10 years, technically, this volcano can be classified as active volcano. Pero kung, kung ang isang volcano ay hindi na nag-erupt, for more than 10,000 years, it is said to be as inactive volcano. Pero, yung mga active volcanoes natin is approximately 1,550 across the globe. So, ibig sabihin, napakarami nilang active volcanoes. And where can we able to find these active volcanoes in our, or in Earth? So, kung mapapansin nyo sa ating illustration or sa ating slide, as you notice, those red spots that we have in the map, are volcanoes, are active volcanoes. And technically, kung titignan natin mabuti, ang kumpol or bands of volcanoes can be found here sa parang inverted U na parang pinadrawing ko sa inyo. So, kung i-compare natin yung drawing nyo kanina, dito sa ating um, map ngayon, it is like an inverted U wherein all of the um, or most of the active volcanoes located. So, parang nandyan siya, para siyang nandando doon mismo sa pinaka ginuhit niyong U. Nandyan lahat yung mga active volcanoes natin. And that particular region of the Earth wherein napaharaming volcano na nag occur is what we call the Pacific Ring of Fire. So, dyan natin makikita yung Pacific Ring of Fire. And the Pacific Ring of Fire um, is the region kung nasaan yung Pacific Ocean. That's why it is called as the Pacific Ring of Fire. Actually, the Pacific Ring of Fire is located in the plate boundary of the Pacific Ocean at lahat ng mga tectonic plates na nakapalibot kay Pacific Ocean. So, kung mapapansin nyo, um, nasa gitna si Pacific Ocean ng ating picture, nasa gitna siya, then lahat ng mga nakasurround sa kanyang mga tectonic plates ay iba't iba. Meron ka dyang North American Plate, meron ka dyang South American Plate, meron ka dyang Eurasian Plate. So, as I said a while ago, um, these, all of these tectonic plates moving independently. May kanya-kanya kasi silang movement. So, kung ang Pacific Ocean itself or the Pacific Plate itself move by itself or by uh, by itself. So, ibig sabihin, yung mga karatig or, ka, or kalapit niyang mga tectonic plates there ay nagmove ng sarili nila. So, iba't iba yung movement nila. Kung may iba't ibang movement lahat ng mga tectonic plates na nakapalibot kay Pacific Plate, particularly Pacific Ocean, so there's a tendency na magkakaroon talaga ng formation ng mga active volcanoes or earthquakes. Diyan talaga mag-occur. Kasi kung nagkakaroon tayo ng iba't ibang klase ng movement within the boundary of the Pacific Ocean, so pwede tayo magkaroon ng different natural occurrences or natural phenomena like formation of the active volcanoes. Ibig sabihin, dyan talaga nabubuo mostly yung mga active volcanoes natin dahil maraming mga involved na tectonic plates na gumagalaw by themselves. So kung ganun ang mangyayari, kung marami siyang naka-attach sa Pacific Ocean, maraming mga different tectonic plates na katabi siya, um, most likely magkakaroon talaga ng tinatawag nating um, active volcanoes. 
kasi it's either pwedeng nagkukulay yung dalawang bato para makabuo ng volcano. Pwede rin namang naghiwala yung dalawang mga land masses or malaking tipak ng bato. Nakakabuo din yon ang tinatawag nating um, active volcanoes. So, these active volcanoes mainly occur in curvy, uh, curvilinear belts that define tectonic plate boundaries. So, itong mga nakikita natin na ito na red um, bands or red spots dito sa ating map, normally, nandyan, nakalocate yung tinatawag nating mga tectonic plate boundaries or yung mga boundaries or yung pagitan ng dalawang te- magkaibang tectonic plates. So, nandyan yung crack mismo na pinakita ko sa inyo kaninang map. Nandyan yung mga cracks. So, kung nandyan yung mga cracks, nandyan din yung pagbuo ng active volcanoes natin and even um, earthquakes natin and mountain belts. So, these are the seven facts about the distribution of active volcanoes that we have. The first one, volcanoes occur in a long, narrow bands. So, as you notice a while ago sa ating map, nag-occur sila ng magkakatabi at pahaba. Depende kung gaano kahaba yung crack mismo na, na meron sa dalawang tectonic plates, sa pagitan ng dalawang tectonic plates. So, kung titignan natin, Um, ang mga volcanoes natin ay sinusundan lang mismo yung crack na, na meron sa mga tectonic plates natin. Kaya, ang mga volcanoes natin ay nag occur ng pahaba and normally magkakagtumpok or magkakagrupo sila. So, yun yung one fact about the distribution of active volcanoes. The second one is, many volcanoes are found around the Pacific Ocean Example is the Pacific Ring of Fire. As I said, there are so many volcanic occurrences at the Pacific Ring of Fire simply because Pacific Ocean or Pacific Plate surrounded by different tectonic plates. So, kung mag-isa ka sa gitna at meron ka mga katabing different tectonic plates na gumagalaw independently, more or less lahat ng mga boundaries ng Pacific Ocean na iyan ay magkakaroon talaga ng Um, active volcanoes, earthquake and mountain belt sa tinatawag. Kaya napakaraming vulkan sa Pacific Ocean or the Pacific Ring of Fire. There is a line of volcanoes running down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So, ipakita ko lang ulit yung pictures sa inyo. Ang Atlantic Ocean ay matatagpuan sa pagitan ng North America, um, South America, and the Africa. Okay, yung sa pagitan ng, ng kung titignan natin yung Greenland, ayan, sa, sa picture natin, kung titignan natin yung um, uh, North America, South America, and we have there the Asia and the um, Africa, yung pinakamahabang line dyan, magmula doon sa Iceland, yung, yung purong um, red na island, yung maliit sa ilalim ng Greenland, pababa dito hanggang sa um, Antarctic Ocean, meron dyang um, pila-pilang mga volcanoes. So, magkakapila silang mga volcanoes dyan. Meron siyang line of volcanoes running down at the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Kasi meron dyang nagkakaroon dyan ng tinatawag nating um, divergent plate boundary movement wherein yung dalawang tectonic plates ay naghihiwalay. That can cause production or creation of what we call volcanoes, active volcanoes. The, the fourth one, there are few volcanoes in Australia. The reason why there are few volcanoes in Australia is simply because, as you notice in the map, balikan ulit natin yung map, Australia doesn't um, lie particularly on the plate boundary. So, nasa gitna siya, wala siya doon mismo sa plate boundary. Hindi siya nadadaanan ng plate boundary. So, technically, kapag ganun yung nangyari, nawala ka, sabi ko nga kanina, at malayo ka mismo sa plate boundary, more or less, konti lang talaga yung volcano na mapoform sa mismong island or landmass na yon. Kagayon, sa Australia, there are few um volcanoes in Australia simply because Australia island itself is quite far 
from the plate boundary. So, kung ganun, um, medyo malayo ka sa plate boundaries, hindi ka talaga masyadong magkakaroon ng um, volcanic occurrences or earthquake. Hindi ka madalas magkakaroon ng earthquake. Next one, volcanoes are found both on the land and in the sea. You can found volcano both on land because um, continental crust can create or it can form volcano and also oceanic crust can form volcano depending on the movement of the tectonic plates. So, sa mga susunod na lesson natin, we will discuss um, these uh, tectonic plate movement para malaman natin kung paano ba nabubuo yung mga volcanoes na yan under and above the sea. So, next one, second to the last, volcanoes found at constructive and destructive boundaries. So, kapag may naghihiwalay or nag collide na dalawang tectonic plates, they can form active volcanoes. Either separating or colliding one another or colliding to each other rather, uh, makakapag-form siya ng tinatawag nating active volcanoes. Nearly all the volcanoes on the land are sited close to the ocean. So as you notice, um, almost uh, all the volcanoes ay malapit sa dagat. So, nasa lupa man sila, pero ang, ang pinakatanaw sa kanila, kapag umakit ka sa kanila, ang matatanong mo agad, dagat. Why? Because technically, sabi ko nga, the, the continental plate and the oceanic plate, um, pwede silang mag-collide with one another. So, kapag nagkukulide sila, there is a tendency na magkaroon ng formation ng volcanoes. So, either uh, the oceanic plate can... Um, go beneath the continental plate, so pwede siyang bumaba, umilalim, while the continental plate will go up, and then that's the time, that, that, that is the process of subduction, wherein it can form volcanoes. Pwede siya maka, makapag-form or maka-create ng volcano sa land natin or sa continental crust natin. So technically, malapit siya sa mga shoreline ng ating karagatan. So, ito ang distribution ng active volcanoes natin. Ayan siya. So, ayan yung Pacific Ring of Fire. Marami siyang mga volcanoes around the Pacific Ocean. Kasi nga, kung makikita natin, meron kang Eurasian Plate dyan. Meron kang Indo-Australian Plate. Meron kang Nazca, uh, Nazca Plate, Antarctic Plate, North American Plate, na nakapalibot mismo kay Pacific Plate. So, kung gumagalaw sila independently, so, may chance talaga. Kung gumagalaw, it's either yung North American Plate tsaka yung Pacific Plate, nagkukulide sila o kaya naghihiwalay. Um, may, technic, may, may possibility talaga makabuo sila ng tinatawag nating um, active volcanoes. Kagaya nga ng napatunayan dyan sa picture na yan na napakaraming volcanoes along or on the um, boundary of the Pacific Plate and to the next or to the other tectonic plates na nakapalibot sa kanya. So, each one marking the surface projection of the earthquake location or the epicenter. Ito namang picture na ito ay nagpapakita ng mga different um, earthquake epicenters sa buong mundo around 1960 to 2000. Hindi pa niya na-record yung 2000 to until now, 20 years na din yun. So, ang dami nang nangyaring earthquake sa atin within that 20 years. Pero dito pa lang, from 1960 pa lang to 2000, ganito na karami yung mga earthquake occurrences. So, kung titignan natin, napakarami niya. Napakadaming mga earthquake epicenters or earthquake episodes na naranasan ng buong mundo. So, the large number of earthquakes, more than 50,000 since 1960. So, 50,000 earthquake occurrences ang nangyari from 1960 with magnitudes greater than 5, which is not really, um, parang kumbaga hindi siya biro na earthquake. Kasi greater than 5 can really distract houses, can really distract um, fields. So, hindi siya biro. Kaya nakakatakot din siya na ganun yung dami ng ating earthquakes na naranasan across the globe. And volcanoes are testaments to the dynamic nature of the earth. As we all know naman, that the earthquake is considerably uh, related to volcanic eruption. So, kung, kung titignan natin, normally, kapag may volcanic eruption, 
sumusunod na dyan yung earthquake. O kaya pag may earthquake, sumusunod na dyan volcanic eruption. O minsan naman wala, yung isa, earthquake lang. O kaya volcanic eruption lang. Pero um, most of the time, ganun yon Kapag may earthquake, meron ka ng uh, volcanic eruption na magaganap. So these two, earthquake and volcanic eruptions, are quite related to one another. That's why, as you notice in the illustration, parang yung mga earthquake epicenters natin can also be found dito sa mga plate boundaries or sa mga cracks ng land masses natin. Di ba? Para siyang nandyan pa rin sa mga plate boundaries. Kung papasin sa Pacific Ring of Fire, ando dun pa rin lahat ng earthquake occurrences. Nandyan pa rin siya in a long, narrow bands din. Kung nasaan yung mga volcanic or yung mga active volcanoes natin. Nando dun din lahat ng mga tinatawag nating um, earthquake epicenters. So, Kung titignan natin, volcanoes and earthquake epicenters really occur in or on the plate boundaries. So, sa mga cracks ng land masses natin sila, makikita talaga. So, it is a major area in the basin of the Pacific Ocean where eruption occurs. So, in a ring of fire, kung makikita niya sa picture, nandyan din yung continuous series of of formation ng oceanic trenches, volcanic arcs, um, volcanic belts, and plate movements. So, kung mapapansin nyo sa picture natin, andyan yung mga Japan Trench, Izu Bonin Trench, Marianas Trench, um, um, Tonga Trench, Karmadic Trench, lahat ng mga klase ng mga trenches, halos makikita natin sa Pacific Ring of Fire, even the, the Marianas trench, yung pinakasikat na klase ng trench sa buong mundo, kung saan din makikita yung pinaka-deepest part of the earth known as the Challenger Deep, yung pinakamalalim na parte ng mundo, dun din natin siya makikita. Why? Because there is really an active movement there of the tectonic plates. Sabi ko nga, um, almost everyday gumagalo ang mga tectonic plates natin at hindi natin namamalayan. Minsan, um, malakas, which can cause earthquake, minsan naman, hindi. Nahalos hindi natin nararamdaman. Pero technically, um, we can say that the tectonic plates are moving every day. So, it is associated with nearly continuous series of oceanic trench, volcanic arcs, volcanic belts, and plate movements. Kagaya ng sinabi ko, nandyan lahat yung formation ng mountains, nandyan halos lahat yung formation ng mga trenches natin, or yung tinatawag nating depression, or yung, yung deep cut sa ilalim ng dagat natin, yung parang malaking lubog sa ilalim ng dagat natin, dyan natin makikita yon sa Pacific Ring of Fire. Um, normally, dyan sila nakalagay. Kasi nandyan nga yung mga um, active tectonic plates natin. So, a mountain system or mountain belt naman is a group of mountain ranges with similarity in form, structure, and alignment that have arisen from the same cause. So, pag sinabi nating mga mountain belts or mountain system, these are the series of mountains um, na ang cause ay isa lang. So, halimbawa, nagkukulay yung dalawang tectonic plates, tapos sabay-sabay silang nag-arise sabay-sabay sila lahat na buo. So, those are what we call mountain system or mountain belts. So, um, this is also the result of tectonic plate movement. Either um, pag nagkukulide sila or pag nag-go away from each other, yung dalawang tectonic plates, so they can form mountain belts or mountain ranges na tinatawag natin. So, they are usually segmented by highlands or mountain passes and valleys. So, itong mga klase ng mga mountain ranges na ito ay normal sa mga continental plate or sa mga continental crust. So, meron din namang underwater, pero typically we can see more um, mountain belt or mountain system above the sea. Kasi ngayon yun nakikita ng mata natin. So, kung mapansin niya sa map natin, um, yung mga brown na yan, those are what we call, yung may mga letters na yan, those are what we call the main or the mountain system itself na meron tayo sa mundo. At kung mapapansin nyo, malapit na naman sila sa tinatawag nating Pacific Ring of Fire. So, kung malapit sila sa Pacific Ring of Fire, more or less, ang ating Pacific Ring of Fire talaga can really produce or can really create um, active volcanoes, 
uh, earthquake epicenters, and even mountain belts or mountain system. So, kung papansin nyo yung puro letter A dyan, letter D, lahat yan ay nasa mountain or nasa Pacific Ring of Fire pa din. So, um, nandyan lahat halos or karamihan ng ating mga mountain system or mountain belts. So, example of Himalaya, uh, of mountain belts na meron tayo is the Himalayas or Himalayas in Asia, somewhere in Nepal. So, dyan din matatagpuan yung pinaka uh, mataas na bundok sa buong mundo, which is known as the Mount Everest in Nepal particularly. But these Himalayas in Asia run or runs in the different countries sa Asia. Marami siyang mga um, dinadaan ng dinadaan ng countries in Asia. So, we have also the Rocky Mountains in North America. So, yan din. Series din yan ng mga mountains. We have also what we call the Sierra Nevada in California. This is also a series of mountain. And we have, of course, we have our own Sierra Madre in the Philippines. Um, ito nga yung tinatawag nating uh, tagashield pagdating sa mga malalakas na ulan. So, ito yung ito yung parang kumbaga nagpapahina sa sa lakas ng hangin na dala ng mga bagyo sa atin. So this Sierra Madre in the Philippines ay uh, is a, is also an example of mountain system or mountain belt. So kahit sa atin, meron din tayong sariling mountain system or mountain belt. Okay, so that concludes our discussion for today. I hope you learned something from this lesson. Thank you.